The Holy Gospel comes from St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the 12, whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. gospel acclamation because it's completely bilingual. Did you see that? Alleluia in English, Alleluia in Spanish. It works, right? Jesus says, whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Okay. Jesus, we're with you. That makes sense, right? We've kind of heard this proclaimed through a much more famous parable of Matthew 25, right? Where were you when I was hungry? Where were you when I was thirsty? And some people didn't see that they'd been with Jesus. Actually, the people that didn't see they were with Jesus were the ones that received the words of affirmation. But then Jesus says, whoever welcomes a prophet, next slide, in the name of a prophet, go back one, there we go, receives a prophet's reward. Wait, where did that come from? To me, that maybe seems like a big jump from welcoming to prophecy. Prophets? We're talking about prophets? Jesus and the Bible honor the importance of this identity called prophet and prophecy. Do we? Do we come to church expecting to hear a word of prophecy? Maybe there's other Christian traditions that connect with that word more than we do. What do the words prophet and prophecy really mean? To me, it's helpful to just take a step back and look at this word with a quick word study. Next slide. In the New Testament, they use the same word that we say, propheten. But this, of course, is coming out of the Hebrew tradition as Jesus is a Jewish rabbi. And most of the time when the word prophet is used in Hebrew, it refers to a word called roa, which means seer. I want you to let this sink in, that the word for prophet means seer. And it doesn't necessarily mean that they see the future. What it means is a prophet is someone who not only hears the word of God and then proclaims the word of God in a particular time to a particular people. The word prophet also refers to someone who sees the way that God sees. And more specifically, Someone who sees us the way that God sees us. So now it makes sense, doesn't it? How he moves from welcoming and serving to seeing. If life and this whole Christianity thing is about love, 
Would you agree it's all about love? Then how can you love someone if you don't first welcome them? And then how do you welcome someone if you first don't see them? In many ways, our life with God and with each other starts with seeing, truly seeing in a way that reflects God's view and heart and love and passion and desire for us. And with Jesus, next slide, we are seen and we are loved through the power of the Holy Spirit that comes to us in the spirit of Pentecost, we can pray and ask from the depths of our heart, God, who is it that we're meant to see and to love? As we know through Jesus, you see us and love us. I'm going to do something a little creative in the middle of my sermon, and that is to share a song that was shared with me this week from a colleague, pastor of mine, Pastor Tom Skornavaki, who leads a recovery ministry. It's an ELCA ministry, but it's a recovery church. So they meet people who are in or entering active recovery. And when he shared this song with me, I had never heard a song like this before. And I'm kind of into music and praise music. And this song touched me profoundly. It is over five minutes long, but I just think it's time well spent because it is prophetic in every way. And I did reach out to the artist, Spencer LaJoy, and he, I should say they, they responded with uh, permission to Pilgrim Lutheran Church personally to be using this uh, song tonight, today. Um, It's obvious that they have a heart for God that Spencer has a heart for justice, that they are not afraid in the spirit of the prophets to raise a cry of lament when things are not right. And it's clear that God has given them eyes to see things that aren't always seen. The name of the song is Plowshare Prayer. It comes from Isaiah chapter 2, verse 4 when it talks about in the realm and shalom of God, God beating swords into plowshares. Those of you who remember a big event that we held in 2019 with Shane Claiborne and Michael Martin uh, beating guns where we literally had someone donate a gun that was beaten into a garden tool, this is the spirit of this song, that anything that is weaponized to hurt can be converted into healing, into welcome, into restoration. So um, I want to share with you this song by Spencer LaJoy, Plowshare Prayer. Your word, I pray that this prayer is a 
plowshare of sorts that it might break you open it might help you grow i pray that your body gets all that it needs and if you don't want healing i just pray for peace i pray that your burden gets lighter each day i pray the mean voice in your head goes away i pray that you honor the grief as it comes i pray you can feel all the life in your lungs i pray that if you go all day being brave that you can go home go to bed feeling safe i pray you're forgiven i pray you forgive i pray you set boundaries and openly live i pray that you feel you are worth never leaving i pray that you know i will always believe you i pray that you're heard and i pray that this Amen on behalf of the last and the least on behalf of the anxious depressed and unseen Amen for the workers the hungry the houseless Amen for the lonely and recently spouseless Amen for the queers and their closeted peers Amen for the bullied who hold in their tears amen for the mothers of little black sons amen for the kids who grow up scared of guns amen for the addicts the ashamed and hung over amen for the callous the wise and the sober and amen for the ones who want life to be over and amen for the leaders who lose their composure and amen for the parents who just lost their baby amen for the chronically ill and disabled amen for the children down at the border amen for the victims of our law and order And I pray that this works. you and your heart against you and your word I pray that this prayer is a plowshare of sorts do you ever notice that when Jesus and the disciples are walking somewhere, it's not always clear that everyone around Jesus or even the disciples see what is happening as they're moving through a city or a given town. But Jesus will stop. He'll stop to engage and he'll see the Samaritan. He'll see the tax collector. He will see the unclean, the marginalized, the vulnerable, the Syrophoenician woman, he will see the children. The disciples will say, you don't have time for the children. The children are important. And Jesus is, will reply and say, what else are we here for? It is for the children. 
It is for the sick that the good news has come, that the tradition exists of prophecy, of seeing, of hearing, of experiencing. And even when we feel unseen, Jesus sees us and loves us. And sometimes God sends us prophets like Spencer LaJoy that will remind us that we are seen and we are loved. Amen? I had the immense privilege of marching in the Pride Parade last Sunday after our congregational meeting. Thank you to uh, Rochelle Minsloff and Mark who set this all up for be, to be part of the Chicago Coalition of Welcoming Churches. It was an awesome experience. It, so awesome that I, I struggled to even put it into words, but let me just share a few.